guys, I'm Karishma Karer and welcome to the Hour Markers. Well, I'm here at Watches and Wonders virtually with the CEO of Alanga und Zona, William Schmidt. So hi, yeah. friends, and uh, welcome to the Hour Markers. Um, Watches and Wonders 2021, it's quite exciting. Unfortunately, we have another year uh, with the virtual interview, but uh, let's hope for the best. Thank you so much, Rima. You're absolutely right. Um, I think what we just see here is the best we can get taking the circumstances into consideration. But I also have to admit, uh, have to admit that I can't wait seeing you in person again. And, and even, you know, with the bed air in Palexpo, um, I never thought that I would looking forward to this, but I do. <laughs> um, I, I want to start with a, a quick wrist check. What's on your wrist today? Um, it's actually the uh, Odysseus and White Balls. Lovely. Uh, I Thank have you. I have my wrist too. It's the, the Lange Market Perpetual Platinum. Yeah. <laughs> now I know why I don't have it because you have it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I've, it's no secret. I've always been a huge Lang Langa und Zona fan. I hope I got that pronunciation right. Finally. Wonderful. And it's absolutely correct. It's Alanga und Zona. Okay. And I know that everybody struggles with the Zona. <laughs> yes, we do. So uh, 10 years, uh, Willem, this year at the helm of Alanga und Zona. Um, talk us through the journey briefly. It hasn't been the easiest. Uh, but it, it was a very inspiring uh, uh, journey. And I have to admit that I had a lot more smiley days than uh, sad days. Um, and many highlights. Uh, I still go to work every day uh, happily. Um, and I know why I'm doing it. It's a great company. And I think in the last three, in the last 10 years, you know, we, we had a couple of things that in years to come when they write the book of history of Alanga and Zona, I think these three milestones will have a place in that. Um, you remember 2013 when we launched the grand complication mm -hmm. and we answered the questions, question once and forever, what can we do if we really want to do it, everything. Um, I'll never forget that bright and sunny day when uh, Chancellor Merkel uh, inaugurated our new manufacturing in 2015. Um, a day that was, that was running like a clockwork. Um, and it's one of those days where everything has to perform perfectly and it did perform perfectly. Um, and, and for sure the, the 24th of October, 2019, when we launched the Odysseus, um, also a day I'll never forget. Absolutely. Uh, I, I was actually in Dubai then, um, oh. at the 24th of October, 2019. Uh, yeah, I think I remember that. We did, we did have this conversation during our last interview, which was also virtual. Um, so um, I have questions on the Odysseus, definitely, but let's dive into what you have in store for us at Watches and Wonders 2020. Yeah. I want to start with, I have to be honest, I, I just have all the press releases laid out in front of me. I'd love to see the watches, but we can't. But I really like the blue on the new triple, on the triple split. It is, it's a very, you know, the triple split, the uh, original version which we launched 2018, the white gold gray dial is sold out. Um, and there are so many customers that want the triple split that we now said we come with a second iteration. And actually for the first time, we, we, we're using the combination of a pink gold case with a dark blue dial, uh, where just the, the two little sub dials are, you know, silverish. Um, and on purpose, these two iterations look very, very different. The aesthetical appearance is very, very, apart on purpose to, to not do twice the same watch, even the movement is of course the same. 
Uh, but um, so my question to you is, we know that at least if I'm not wrong, you're, um, you're big into vintage cars and chronographs for that matter. Um, how do you use a triple split in uh, day to day life? Um, look, if, and that's a very funny uh, example. Um, I want my uh, morning egg on the weekend rather a little soft and my wife hates it. So how do you do that? Um, and the triple split is the perfect answer. I know it's funny, but it just illustrates because it's, uh, it's um, my eye is five and a half minutes. Yvonne's is actually uh, six minutes and 15 seconds. And with a normal, um, with a double split, you could do it, but with a normal chronograph, you would be unable to measure this time. With the double and the triple split, you can do. Um, I never tried to cook the eye longer than an hour, uh, so that's not needed. But that's just a simple uh, case of how you can use a triple split to prepare your eggs at the weekend. That's really interesting, you know. Uh, it's, it's good to hear that you can use it at home as well, you know, besides, you know, in the air or while calculating lap time. So it's just good to get an insight into that. Absolutely. Whenever you have comparative or additive uh, time measurements of two events, uh, you can use a chronograph. Uh, chron I just took on purpose a rather funny example. Uh, but I'm sure we can make a little uh, competition where it's the, the funniest example of <laughs> where you can use a triple split. Well, that's a good idea. I should, I should, I should take a <laughs> <laughs> um, The next one is the 67th caliber at uh, Alain de Uzzone, the, the perpetual calendar that you've come out with. I have to say, and again, I've just seen the images, but I think the, the, the pictures have done complete justice, particularly to the pink gold salmon colored uh, dial that you've introduced this year. Talk us through that watch. It's, you know, we launched the uh, Tobio Perpetual Calendar, the Langer one in 2013. Um, and the other only Perpetual Calendar we launched in 2001. So we thought it's time to have another standalone Perpetual Calendar and this time the Langer one. Of course, in the beginning, we thought, uh, why not taking the original movement, take the Torbjö out, replace it by a normal escapement? But we, we soon realized that that's absolutely impossible because the Lange one Torbjö perpetual calendar is a completely integrated movement. Um, and therefore we decided we start from scratch. We took the dematic base movement. Um, we then developed a perpetual calendar and we did it slightly different to the original one. Um, and probably the biggest difference is there is no day-night indication on the perpetual calendar because it's not necessary. We took the Lange one moon phase and built that into the perpetual calendar. So now you know if it's, if it's light blue sky behind your moon phase, it's day. If it's dark blue, it's night. And of course you want your instantaneously jumping indications at 12 o'clock midnight and not during lunchtime. Um, so again, it's all about legibility and specifically with the perpetual calendars, as we know, there's a lot of information and sometimes it's a little overwhelming. So you can't see the date immediately or you can't see the time immediately. On that watch, it's very clear. The date and the time, which are the most important informations, are immediately recognizable and legible. Okay, I also feel the blue that you've used for the triple split also makes it very crisp and legible. The dial is very crisp. Yes. So I think that's been one of the focus uh, of the brand from the beginning is to ensure that the dials are clear and crisp and extremely legible. I mean, that explains yeah, the date as well. It's, it's, you see, I'm wearing glasses, uh, <laughs> which I need if I you know, look at short distances. Um, and, and I always believe that um, yes, watches in general have lived, outlived their usefulness because we have telephones and all that, which will give us the time. But if you work a watch, if you, it, it must be functional. It's a very German thing. If you can't read the time anymore, why wearing a watch? Right. Um, so that, that's why we greatly emphasize on legibility um, and on clear legibility, uh, which we believe is very important. You know, that's why 
the, uh, um, the minute uh, counter on the chronograph jumps and not goes slowly because then you always struggle to see where actually is it at the moment. Tiny little things, but again, this year it's all about subtle differences. Um, and, and this is just one of it. Yeah, that's what that's what makes a longer, longer, potentially. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you. Um, uh, and the final, I think, introduction for Watches and Wonders is the not so little wonder, uh, or the, <laughs> wonder, um, the little longer one moon phase. Uh, another yes. beautiful dial on this one. What is the treatment on the dial here? It's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's literally, it's basically glass. Uh, but there is metal flakes in it um, and it's polished and that's why you see this sprinkle um, the almost semi-transparent dial. Mm -hmm. um, some call it aventurine, other call it uh, blue flux. Um, there are different words for it, but it's, a, it's quite a complicated thing to work with, um, specifically in the process of putting indices in because you do the, the slightest thing wrongly and they break. Um, so that's it, but it's a, it's a gorgeous looking watch. I think of the three watches, that probably is the most difficult for the team to produce proper photos of. In reality, it actually looks a lot nicer than even on these good photos. Because even I, I've also noticed this tre a trend of sports steel watches which are coming in in a big way um, over the last couple of years. You've done uh, also the Odysseus, uh, which yes. has reactions, but eventually uh, has got a fabulous reaction from almost everybody. Um, are you looking at expanding that line of the sports steel version of Anandi and Zone? Look, we always said the Odysseus uh, um, is, is, is a family and the main uh, and unique selling preposition is it's 120 meter waterproof. And it doesn't matter whether that's the steel or the white gold version or any other version, and it will develop into a family. At the moment, there are only two members in that family. There will be more members, but um, you know me by now, I will only talk about that once we will <laughs> launch the watch and not before. Okay, well, at least we got a sneak peek into it. I'd say. Absolutely, <laughs> and, and it's worth trying, and, 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 and but, Unfortunately, I only I can assure you there will be more um, watches in that family, but I can't uh, disclose now when and what that is going to be. Okay, uh, we have another. Uh, so, Alangian Zone, at, at Alangian Zone, you've done the grand complication, you've done the side work, you've done the triple split. Uh, this, these genre of watches, they cater to mature collectors of a certain social status. Is there something that you would consider intro introducing to your collection for aspiring along the zone enthusiasts? But that's what we have, Karishma. We have the Saxonia thing, we have the 1815. Even a basic Langer one is not totally out of reach uh, for somebody that wants to invest into this hobby and is passionate about fine watchmaking. Um, so I think we do have that. Can we go any? Further down, I'm afraid we can't because of the amount of craftsmanship and labor that goes into it. Um, so the Saxonia thin and that price point is the lowest we can go um, if we still want to produce what we stand for. Double assembly, you know, polishing and decoration of every part, um, the, the, the loft of detail that we put into every watch. Um, that's what we stand for, and, and, and the limit we can go is probably the Saxonia thin. We can't go further down. Okay, that's good to know, because that's a question I get a lot, but it's good to hear it straight from you. Um, my next question is on the design front. Um, now, being a part of a larger group, I'm sure you have a lot of restrictions or maybe predefined boundaries in terms of how much you can think out of the box. Uh, does that really um, hinder... Uh, the experimental process? Or Not at all, actually. You know, it's, it's great to be a member of a big group. Think about logistic, uh, IT secu security, uh, uh, cyber crime, uh, uh, IP, uh, legal and law students and all that. So we have, we can afford the best of the best because it's catered for by the group. 
uh, which is which is great for a little company like we are. Um, we set our boundaries ourselves. Our boundaries is what Alanga Anzuna stands for. Um, and Odysseus is a perfect example how we can expand our footprint without losing ourselves, which is so important for us. Uh, that is more restricted actually by, um, by our own uh, uh, boundaries that we give to ourselves to avoid that we lose ourselves. Okay, that's good to know. Um, the current situation that we're in um, isn't the best. And as we're all aware, physicality is of utmost importance in, an, in the business of watches that we're all in. Um, how are you at Lange and Zone combating that since people, not everybody can physically touch and feel your watches. And we all know, especially now with social media uh, going completely crazy, uh, people see a watch and they don't think twice before having an opinion about it without even uh, touching and feeling it. So um, how do you plan to combat or average that out? I'm afraid we can't. Um... You know, I, I think we just have to be a bit patient. Uh, soon, um, I think at least within this year, we can meet again in person. And, you know, if I, if I summarize the hundreds of Zoom interviews that I had over the last 12 months, um, I would say two things. First of all, a lot of our clients appreciate the convenience of what we do just now. You know, you are not jet lagged, I'm not jet lagged. We didn't have to travel around the world to meet each other. Um, and we can see and look at each other and we can talk. And, and on top of that, we know each other for a long time. So it makes it a little easier. Um, so that's going to stay. Even when COVID moves away, omni-channel and remote sales and telephone sales and e-commerce and Zoom meeting or Skype meeting or whatever is on hand, I'm pretty sure that is going to, to stay because the clients have changed their behavior as well and accommodate for it. And they learned to appreciate the convenience. But then for that moment of truth, you know, when you touch that watch for the first time, when, when, when you, you see your object of desire and somebody explains it to you and helps you with it and enjoys that moment with you, I think most of our clients, they still are looking forward to times when that is possible again. Um, and in the meantime, we just have to stay patient. The digital world can do a lot, but it can not give a real feel for a watch that goes where a watch belongs to, which means your wrist. Absolutely, I agree. And that's why I keep telling people um, online presence is practically nothing without some offline credibility. So, yeah. Um, and I think we saw that example uh, with the Odysseus uh, when yeah. You, um, so yeah, that's good to know. Um, in terms of research and development, we're seeing a lot of new innovations uh, coming up uh, in the industry, uh, just so to say. Very recently, there was a groundbreaking um, uh, development uh, on the movement front from, a, from another brand. Is there something that Lange is also working towards? Within the traditional parameters that we have, um, I, you know, we only produce, as I said before, five and a half thousand watches uh, a year. So nobody buys us because we have the most advanced uh, robotics that can produce crystals that will transform into an escapement. You know, people buy us because hens struggle a lot to come up with the most perfect product that humans can develop. That's what we stand for, Karishma. Not um, how can we circumvent all the challenges by using other materials or new technologies. Um, that's not at least what we stand for. That's why we don't use uh, uh, silicate in, in movement parts or things like that, because that is taking away the challenge for a watchmaker to adjust the watch properly. Um, I know that may sound anachronistic, but that's what we stand for. And that's what our client expect from us. Otherwise, we're again in, you know, the, the ramping up of production and shortcuts. Um, and instead of training people, we just feed machines. 
but that's not what our clients want from us. Absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't have said it any better. Um, another topic that I'd like to touch on is the strict demarcation of watches for men and watches for women. Personally, I don't know um, if Lange has ever um, been a part of that demarcation because your watches, uh, firstly, are not extremely large size, so are worn by both men and women. Absolutely. Um, Personally, my grail watch, if I ever, ever get my hands on, is the Zeitberg Decimal Stripe. So it's a very yes. large watch. And when I tell people that, they're, they're stunned and, and amazed at why, why I would want to wear a watch that large on my wrist. But um, it seems to be a topic that's um, catching on more and more with various brands who sort of uh, categorize watches for men and for women. What yeah. No, we never did that, to be honest. We just developed watches uh, in line with the design language of the different families, in line with what we request from a request from a real Alang and Söhne watch. And then the size usually uh, is very much linked to the space we need to put the movement in. So a side back decimal strike will always be 44 millimeter in diameter because that's what we just need to put all the mechanical components in to make it work. Mm -hmm. So we don't think from we develop a main watch or we develop a ladies watch. Um, we just develop our Lange and Söhne watches. Um, and who then is interested in it and likes it and buys it, that's none of my business. You know, that's um, uh, some men like very small watches, some women like very large watches. And I always say we also don't have the segment of uh, small wrists and big wrists, because that would make a lot more sense. I, for example, can't wear certain watches comfortable because they're too big for me. Right. You know, that's that's. But we develop these watches, Lange 31, for example, because you need that space to cater for one month of of of. of uh, um, auto auto autonomy. So you can't make it any smaller. Right. Um, that's the reason. I can't wear it, but it doesn't mean that we have developed that for two meter tall um, men with huge wrists. Right. That's not that's not the category we think in. Right. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, you've got to buy what you love, you know, whether it's a 40 Absolutely. Or a 36 millimeter, if it makes you happy and if, you know, if it's not really damaging your uh, bank balance too much, then, you know, it's the watch for you. Uh, Absolutely. And, um, you got to invest. Uh, and I get this question a lot and I repeat myself again and again that watches are an investment, whether they are an investment to your happiness. So, you know, buy what makes you smile. Absolutely. You know, I, I always believe that, yes, most of, you know, at least our watchers, they will uh, maintain their value over time. I have no doubt about this. Um, but I do not cater too much for investors. All our efforts go for people that are passionate about fine watchmaking. That's the real emphasis. Um, and I always believe that you know, if you have a watch and you put it into the safe for investment, that doesn't make you happier. I agree completely. Um, uh, so, William, I had a couple of questions from my Instagram followers, but I've just picked two because there were so many. Uh, yep. One from the material front. Uh, apparently, Honey Gold has been a big, big, big hit in India. So the question is, uh, do we have any more Honey Gold editions uh, for your collections? At the moment, you know, we're just working uh, still on the 175th anniversary watches, which we launched last year in October. Um, and that will keep that part of production busy for the remainder of the year, at least probably specifically for the Tobograph another two years. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it for the moment. Uh, not more to expect right now. And when can we expect the next, next site work? Uh, whenever we will launch it. <laughs> okay, I guess that's all I'm getting out of you on that front. <laughs> but, you know, thanks for trying, but you know me, I only talk about watches when we launch them and not what we have in the pipeline. Otherwise, I would steal all the nice surprises. Yeah. That's... Life would be boring. But it's getting tougher with you. I used to be able to get a lot more information out of you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, William, my last question is more market specific. Um, yes. You have a huge collector base in India. Um, a lot of Indians uh, love and appreciate the craftsmanship of Alangro and Zone watches. You have 36 boutiques globally now. Will the 37th one be in India? Um, you know what, taking at the moment the circumstances into consideration, I would very much doubt it because none of us can travel to India. Uh, nobody from India can travel to. So how, how, how can you evaluate the whole boutique uh, situation and where it makes sense and train people and all that without being there physically? So um, I would not expect that until the situation is a lot more under control than it is right now. What are your thoughts on the Indian market though? I'm curious. Look, it's a, it's, 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 we have great Indian customers. Um, I haven't been to India for two years. It was on my plan to get there, but then, as we all know, all our schedules have been changed, uh, not by a travel agent, but by a virus. Um, <laughs> and and um, we, we will get back to India when we can. At the moment, as I said, it's unthinkable uh, because we, we can't. Uh, we just physically can't go there. And you and I know if there is a market where it is important to see what you get and how to get it, then it's in India. Definitely. Lastly, any favorites that you have this year? Um, I have to admit, I love that Odysseus and White Gold. Um, it's very much me. Um, the Lange One Perpetual Calendar is definitely watch that will end up in my personal collection. Mm -hmm. um, the triple split is a little too big for my wrists. So I love the watch, but it's just a tiny little bit too big for a man of my size or for wrists like mine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, definitely. And I think my wife uh, looked at the little Lange One and loves it with no diamonds. With no diamonds. Yes. I think my pick would definitely be the Lange one, the perpetual, um, the limited edition. It's a yeah. I had it around my wrist last week for uh, uh, for films that we had to do for Watches and Wonders. Now it's back in the safe because I will not wear it right now because I don't know who I meet and, and so on and so forth. But I'll have it around my wrist next uh, week, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, not the white gold, pink gold version, uh, the white gold, uh, the, the pink gold with um, the gray dial. And it's a great looking watch. I'm sure it's a few of the perks of being the CEO of Alango Zone, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a privilege. You're absolutely right. I can choose. And um, it's that moment of the year that I really look forward to when I can choose. Well, it was a pleasure having you as always. Uh, Thank you, Karishma. I wish we could do it in person. I Next know. time we'll do it again. Hopefully soon. But yeah. take care of yourself and um, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Stay healthy. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye. Good to see you. On that note, stay tuned as we keep marking time at Watches and Wonders 2021. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on all our cool updates. Until next time.